since some of the young people are here, uh, even at the age of 18, 19, and they are talking so confidently about what they think the climate change should be. So I feel it's a very, very uh, good place where we all come together. We make commitment that what we should do for to see a better future and future generations and uh, to see that a cleaner place to live for. Policy is a critical element to enable us to achieve our ambition. We cannot get there without a supportive policy framework. As Jeff highlighted, we need a coherent government, frame, government policy frameworks across the countries and we need a coherent industrial, trade and climate change policies to achieve our ambitions. The core business of GFG is very energy intensive uh, and therefore being part of um, events like this we get to uh, learn, uh, listen and collaborate with all key partners to be able to ensure that GFG fulfil our goal of carbon neutral by uh, 2030. Most large steel companies have got several different footprints all over the world. They don't look the same. They're a mix of, of glass furnaces, which are the biggest emitter of, of emissions, versus electric arc furnaces, which is, a, is effectively recycling steel, um, which are a lot of the assets that, that GFG has. And so we look at it on a, a very local basis. Um, but you have to have a global target. Um, and I think having a global target for the industry and for your own company is important. You have to aim for something. We need to keep green hydrogen on the table. We need to keep CCS on the table, carbon capture and storage. Cities uh, will become more and more important. By 2050, two-thirds of the people will live in cities and uh, this will come along with an increase in transportation and building. So. As uh, Alvance, uh, we will offer, uh, and it's our mission to offer our customers uh, carbon, um, low carbon solutions. A warm welcome from me, welcome to all of you for joining this session this afternoon uh, on Green Steel, Foundation for the New Net Zero Economy. I'd like, just like to set the scene from a, a personal perspective, and the, most, the strongest point I wanted to make was the importance of steel. There's a lot of discussion about the power sector, the transport sector, but without steel, we do not develop uh, as uh, human beings on the planet. Steel is invisible sometimes, but there are 10 tons of steel embodied in society for every single one of you in this room. It's embodied in the building, it's embodied in the train that I took up from London to come here. We, we use steel in, in invisible ways uh, and in wonderful ways, and we should expect the rest of the world to want to use. The second lesson is that we can go really quickly when you think about the last decade, we haven't gone quickly on steel, but the lesson from the energy transition is you can go really fast. And actually, if, if we're going to meet those climate targets, then we're all going to have to make changes to the things that we do. Above all, we need to move beyond the strategies of the past. So my hope is that the discussions we're having here and the research that my fellow, fellow panelists are doing uh, will provide new energy and ideas. Now, there are some specific things about the steel industry that amplify that challenge but there are also some things that make it an absolute no-brainer in terms of investing if you want to have an impact for decarbonisation. So the first thing is what's the scale of investment that's needed and what does that get us in terms of reduction in CO2. Uh, the second thing that investors should be thinking about is how to determine what a good investment in this space is. Uh, and the third is just to finally touch on an important piece which often gets overlooked in the decarbonisation journey which is the social and human aspect of this and there are communities and people that rely on these sectors who are going to be deeply impacted by this transition. This is why we go back to there has to be a proper carbon pricing system and this is how the system worked in America with reducing sulphur dioxide that the commodities move around so unlike you know energy and looking at wind towers there's a lot of inputs that go into making steel that are moving around. It's still one of the most volatile markets out there. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to thank the panel um, very warmly for all your excellent answers and, and uh, as well all of you, thank you very much for joining this session. Thank you. I've thought about climate change for a long time and, and I think events like this now show me that a lot more people are interested in it and actually taking action. 
And I think one of the key things that I've heard from several speakers today is we've been talking about it long enough. We need to get, be getting on with doing something about it. And that's why I'm proud to be part of GFG because we've got a CN30 commitment and now we're putting some of the meat on the bones and we're actually doing something about it now. I think events like this are so important to the foundation because it's, it's for us, it's very much about young people. It's trying to capture their imagination, um, inspire them and show them that actually industry is very forward thinking and that, and that we have lots of innovations, lots of new technologies that we want to, um, to share with young people and hopefully encourage them into studying STEM subjects but also into manufacturing and industry. I think it's been fascinating to have conversations with random people who you wouldn't normally speak to in a kind of day-to-day -day life. So from policy makers to campaigners to people from different sectors but also people from within our own sector because I think the only way that we're going to get to the goals that we've set ourselves in terms of decarbonisation is through collaboration and collaboration with a really wide group of policy makers, asset owners and industry. So great to have those conversations. GFG is a very ambitious company. It's in a very, very energy intensive and high carbon sector, but we have a really good story to tell in our own business about low carbon. We've got assets like Lock Harbour, in Speciality Steel in Rotherham, which are really at the forefront of the low carbon transition. So I think we've got a great story to tell and we should be here to tell it.